Before this episode begins, we just wanted to take a moment and mention this was recorded before the actors went on strike. We here at Podcast Demastered wanted to say we stand in solidarity with the WGA and SAG-AFTRA. And because of this, we won't be covering any other TV shows or movies for the time being that fall under the strike guidelines. We cover many topics here and hope you'll enjoy our next few episodes as we stand in solidarity with all those who contribute to the entertainment industry. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Podcast Demastered. I'm Chelsea, and I'm here with Wade as always. Now, our last episode, we covered the Inheritance Cycle series. We hope you'll give it a listen. We know it's a very beefy episode, but we had a lot to discuss with that. There's definitely lots of material there. Well, on this episode, we're going to be covering one boy, one dragon, a world of adventure. It's Aragon the movie. <laughs> <laughs> Cue some Star Wars music there. Uh huh. <laughs> For real, that was like the tagline of this film. I saw that a lot. It was, was on the poster really? and everything. Yes. One boy, well, one dragon. The dragon. The world of a world of adventure. I just added the. It's Aragon the movie. Yes. Yeah. What a. Yeah. So catchy as heck. My mm-hmm. goodness. For, wow. And I mean, look at all the sequels they made. They made one movie for every single book, didn't they? Wow. Yeah, That's they got through quite... everything. Yeah. They packed so much yep. knowledge into to four short, beautifully done mu- movies. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No. <laughs> what we got, we're going to talk about this movie. It it was bound to happen. We, we, we covered the books. You knew we were going to cover this movie. This wonderful 2006 film. This film with quite the strange, interesting cast, I will say. But... It was a first-time director, Stefan Fangmeier, who actually was a lot, like, who has done a lot more with visual effects. He has worked for, which I don't know if you even watched to the end of the credits, to know what visual effects department worked on this. You'll notice they're very famous. Or, I well, and he was from, he worked for the very famous visual effects company, the uh, Industrial Light and Magic. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> yep. And the sound designers on this movie, uh, Skywalker Sound. Really? So lots of Lucasfilm <laughs> stuff was involved in this because he has worked on a lot of properties that they have worked on. And so he had friends that helped him work on this movie. So they, I think he really focused a lot of time and energy on the visual effects or specifically may have been Sephira, but... I would imagine. <laughs> we, 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 will, well, we can discuss that. Yeah. But yeah, like I said, this was the only movie he ever directed. Mm. Yes. <laughs> I'll be nice. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know what? But he's successful in other things in the film industry. It's just, you know, this movie just wasn't his breakout role. It wasn't a breakout role for any of these stars, I would be bold enough to say. Now, you think, okay, so this, this movie came out in 2006, which actually came out... December 15th, 2006. At this point in time, there were two books in the series that were out. Aragon and Eldest. Eldest had come out the prior year in August. So you think they maybe would have like been like, oh, there's two books and there's a lot of stuff that happens in that second book where they would be like, hmm, maybe, maybe we, we can like, yeah, maybe, or maybe like make a little hints here and there about, you know, characters that should hopefully still be around or hinted at as being a little more important. But We're going to kill him. Yeah, for real. (laughs) We're going to kill them and we're going to reveal things quickly. And the end. Oh my gosh. No emotions for you. Yes. So listeners, yes, we're already like right off the bat complaining about this movie. We did just watch this movie again. It has been years since I've seen it. I needed to go on the public record that Chelsea made me do it. (laughs) (laughs) We talked about this months ago. Chelsea made me do it. (laughs) Okay. Yes. Yes. We we talked about it months ago, but she forced me. (laughs) <laughs> totally i wasn't so, gonna do it i wasn't gonna do it and nope <laughs> <laughs> no we're, we're doing we're doing it for the yes episode i had to we spend have to four dollars to rent it and everything because i couldn't find it online and i don't know financial disaster yeah. i'll never recover from <laughs> mm-hmm. okay i have to tell you i had to rent it too this is the movie that i told you i owned and let me clarify listeners so 
I did not like this movie when I first saw it. I did own it though. I own a lot of terrible movies. Yeah, I I I went through a (laughs) fit. Yeah, I went through a phase like in high school, like early college, where I felt like I wanted to collect all the movies. And that was also around the time where like Blockbuster was shutting down. So they had all those deals of like buy a bunch of movies for like a really good deal. So I was like, sure, sure, let me just add them all to my shelves. Well, apparently, I I thought I still had that movie. I clearly got rid of this movie like years ago. <laughs> so understandable. I too had to rent it. But understandable. I thought it was funny. Did you see that they came out with a like an extended edition of this movie? <laughs> uh, yeah, and I was like, you know what? If we're gonna watch it, we're gonna watch it all. Couldn't even do that. I couldn't even. No, rent. you have to buy. I that couldn't one. even rent that. Like I'm not spending sixteen bucks on that for the extra yeah. whatever twenty minutes it was. No way. Yeah. 20 minutes. And I was like, I, I'm no sorry. I don't think that 20 minutes were going to make a difference with what was already in this <laughs> film. I mean, I, I don't know where to start. I mean, okay, listeners, if, if you listen to our first episode, you know what Aragon is supposed to be about, right? Okay. This you one. You wouldn't know <laughs> by watching this movie. You know, there's Aragon. Yeah, he finds the dragon egg. You know, he's still a, a farmer, lives with his uncle and his cousin. But, like, there's a lot of differences in that very beginning. And then it's the stone as the egg that hatches it's Safira. he becomes a dragon rider immediately yep immediately, immediately. no my real favorite part was when um was when they're like he's like teaching Safira how to um fly by throwing her <laughs> into the air um and uh they're running and then she's flying and then she's gone and i was just like end of the movie she escaped yep yep <laughs> she knew <laughs> what it was this movie she ran <laughs> But then, like, and then, like, she gets, like, struck by magic lightning, and then she, like, ages into a full-grown dragon. And she comes yeah. down, and she's all like, Aragon, you are my rider, and I am your dragon, and you have a destiny <laughs> to fulfill. And he's like, word, that's cool. <laughs> that was, per- that is beautifully explained right there. That's amazing. Fantastic. I am Rachel Weiss. <laughs> Yes. Oh my gosh. Which, okay, real quickly with the whole lightning strike thing, I didn't know if it was truly implying like, ooh, we're just going to do a fancy like edit, a passage of time, or if it was nope. literally, and nope, it was that moment yep. of just yep, it was magical moment. age. He's just, just like, dude, my dragon. on his head. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I, I, but yes, I was the sitting there the whole time. I was like, yeah, um, no, that's not how that happened in the book. I hate to be yeah. that person that like, wow, that didn't happen in the book. I have never been that person, even through all Harry Potter books or movies. Like, but like, there's one, there's one thing in like nitpicking, like dialogue choices, and like, are we including this or not? You know, there's little things, and then there's this movie, <laughs> and yeah. just changing the entire like core concepts of a bunch of different things. I just, I just couldn't. I said, I. I, I got obnoxious watching this movie. I was like, yeah, that didn't happen that way. Absolutely not. Nope, that wasn't a thing. <laughs> nope, that was the opposite, actually. <laughs> like, yeah. a no, lot. There's... I was petty. I just couldn't help it. I couldn't do it. No, I know. It's like, I think maybe the first five seconds of the film are maybe, like, accurate. And then they're just like, we're just going to change everything. And I was like, okay. But yeah, no, this is definitely one where it's just, like, it's absurd. Like, you're given so much information. Like, it's fine. Like, I mean, they're all beefy books. Like, it's a big deal. Like, this movie is less than two hours long. It's understandable that you don't want to include every little detail, but the details you include are just, like, totally wrong and mess up the rest of (laughs) any potential sequels that you would have with this. Like, My favorite part was, like, Galbatorix from the very, very beginning. (laughs) was like, you have to stop the boy. He is my ultimate rival. He will destroy me if you do not. Like, this whole big quest like, to me? do that. Yeah. And I was like, um, no. <laughs> like, <Yeah>. absolutely not. <laughs> like, and that he's, like, fearful of Aragon, like, for yeah. real. <laughs> like, you didn't, Durza doesn't capture Aragon, so he throws a fit and destroys half his chamber. Like, no. <laughs> no. Yeah. Not how that worked out. There were some very uncomfortable scenes with, like, him, like, up close with Durza and, like, his fingers and, like, Durza's fingers. Yeah, on, what's like, up with his fingernails? And stuff. Like, oh, I don't, I don't know. Galbatorix's fingernails. Just... What's up with that? He's uh, supposed to be very pretty and, like, not evil looking. And, like, yeah. no, but let's give him, like, four inch nasty thick nails, like, that curl and, like, I don't yeah. know. I don't know about that. It was just John Malkovich just go weird. And he was like, okay. Like, you read some Shakespeare, add a little bit of that to it. It's fine. Yeah. 
people like Shakespeare. Mm-hmm. They eat it up. Yeah. And also, let's totally murder Sloane at the beginning. He was yeah. definitely murdered in the Oh, movie. yeah, he died. He died. And I was just like, oh, good thing he's not in the next three books. <laughs> yeah. Good thing he doesn't have, like, an extended storyline or anything. Yeah. <laughs> Although, I also said the same thing when um, they killed the Razak. <laughs> Oh, I was like, I was like, oh, good thing they don't have anything to do for the next two books. It's fine. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I guess they don't go I on to on, murder yeah. a bunch of people and do a bunch of terrible things. That's fine. Nope. Nope. No, I was honestly confused half the time because everybody looked like humans. And I was like, oh, you're supposed to be a... Also, yes. Yeah. And I was like, mm, okay. Yeah. Also, oh, okay. I don't know. There, there's so many places to start. Let okay, let's out. talk it's about okay. Arya. Aria. Oh, okay, yeah. Ex- Does she even look excellent. like an elf? Um, no, she didn't. Actually, actually, uh, my fiance asked me at the end of the movie. Wait, is she supposed to be an elf? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep, sure is. Yep. You wouldn't think so, but yes, she is. Also, yeah. did you know she's also the biggest damsel in distress you've ever seen? <laughs> I. It killed me. <laughs> this was. Oh my gosh. <sighs> Aragon, you must save me. <laughs> Words Ari Arya's never said in her life. I'm the princess, help me. <laughs> like, for real. She's like, touch me and I'll kill you. Not, yeah. not, I am yours, yeah. take me forever. Yeah, and I was like, ew. Also, she looks like 40 in this. And I was like... <laughs> Aww. I know, that's mean. Can't but I was just like, she looks, I mean, like, way too old. Like, I know we've already talked about, like, clearly Arya is, like, way, way older than Aragon. But, like, she's an elf. She does look pretty young. But this, I was like, what, what? What are they trying to do in this? This is making me uncomfortable. I don't know what's happening. Mm -mm. Also, wasn't her hair like red? Her hair is not red in the book. Yeah, I always pictured it as being like a red brown, like a darker red brown color. And nope, blonde, that's fine. Yeah. No, I was like, okay, it's not that like uh, Christopher Paolini doesn't describe, like make her description like every like chapter, like about what she looks like. So, you know, a lot of material to work with, but okay. I don't know. This movie, it's just, it's bad. I tried to really come, go into this movie with an open mind and thinking, maybe I can pretend as a movie itself it's okay. No. Like, <laughs> it's, no, it's just like, it's a bad fantasy film. If you just look at it that way, like, it's still bad. It is, yeah. It's, I feel like the acting was also kind of terrible. Like, nobody was really giving their all in their performances. And they Aragon, were just kind of like, like reading straight lines. played the same person, like... He's always acting the same way. And it's... I don't know if it was my TV or what, but Brom, I was like, I swear I can't hear what you're saying. You are whispering the entire time. Yeah, and that's the thing. Here's like, Jeremy Irons, like, he, he can do things. He, he knows how to, like, portray a character. Yeah. But I felt like they were like, like, please don't read the books before you come on stage. Um, We'll tell you what you need to know about your character. And that's it. Mm-hmm. Please don't. Don't, no, don't touch that book. Don't look at, don't look at it. Yeah. The only person I felt a little bit of something from was, but we I had to talk about, the guy who played Durza, Robert Carlyle. <laughs> He's just doing what he does. <laughs> yes. Also, when I he watched this, was I, was like, <laughs> mm-hmm, I was like, I was like, hmm, do the people who create Once Upon a Time remember watching this movie and go, yes, that is Rumpelstiltskin? Because <laughs> when I was watching this, I was like, he even still looks like how he does in Once Upon a Time. It's kind he of does. funny. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Yeah. Like, you know that movie you were in, Aragon? Just do that. You're that character with a new name. Here's a hat. Do that more, (laughs) and we'll make you look like exactly like that. Like, it'll be fine. I'm like, (laughs) okay. (laughs) Well, in talking about the character of Durza, like, in this movie, wow, they gave him a lot to do. (laughs) Uh Uh-huh. Because in the books, he's like, no, we just show up at the end, and, like, that's about it. Um, And then he dies. And in the movie, like, oh, no, he's everywhere. He's doing all the things. He's, like, the main antagonist. He yeah, really is. In the, the big, giant much. fight that he gets at the end with Aragon, like, heroically being flung off of Sephira, stabbing him through the chest. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is... I wow. lost it at that. Like, I not in my Aragon. <laughs> 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 I had Then I had to explain, like, that is not how that fight happened. Absolutely yeah. not. Like, Sapphira was nowhere near this fight for most of it. <laughs> yeah, and like it was her Arya and Arya did stuff yeah, too. Yeah, her and Arya came in shattering a gigantic gemstone to distract Durza for the most smallest of seconds, while Aragon scrambled to pick up his sword and stab it through him. Like, 
None yeah. of that happened. Durs, he was even like, yeah. Aragon was almost dead as it was. He got this gigantic, like, gash on his back, like, cut him through, that cripples him for almost the entirety of the whole next book. Like, mm-hmm. I guess we don't Huge need to talk problem. about that, though. <laughs> nope. Give him something super heroic to do, I guess, you know? Yeah. It was just incredibly hilarious. Just flying off as if, yeah, that just, need a screenshot of that. Off the tail. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Also, they didn't even, like, describe, because it really just looks like a smoke dragon, in a sense, that Durs is flying on, and I'm like... Yeah, what was that supposed to be? Wasn't it supposed to be one of the, with the, the, like, leather blocker things, or whatever they're called? Um, the like, ba- or the older adults of the Razak I mean, like, or something. It, that's the only other thing it could have been, but like, those were like real creatures, and this was like not, not. <laughs> like, I, like Aragon's trying to like stab at it, and like his sword goes through it, but like, yeah. and then after that though, like Saphira can like bite at it, and then like Aragon is successfully. Uh-huh, I stabbing noticed that. It. Like, okay, I was I confused. Guess it's fine. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was like, okay, we're just uh, making it work for the plot. Mm-hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, and like the, want it to. And the dwarves that aren't really dwarves. Were there any? I don't even remember them. Yeah, like Hrothgar. King Hrothgar is in the movie. Oh. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. But like, they don't ever talk about the fact that like, <laughs> oh, you know, this place we're in, this is the Dwarven Kingdom. No big deal. Whatever, man. Maybe I just lost it. I wasn't paying attention. Yeah, I Maybe. don't know. But the costume was so bad. I could not tell like what was like a human an elf yeah clearly a dwarf versus like the urgles or yeah i mean the urgles i could kind of tell but they still looked like humans they were just people yeah like wild feral people Uh uh-huh not eight not eight feet of like rippling muscle with gigantic like ram horns no not those nope okay you want to talk about a character that was so sad to see and wasn't even mentioned by name really or kind of was angela oh Oh my god. That short, terrible scene with not even the actual, like, correct prophecy or whatever. Yeah, like, not at all. Not one bit. (laughs) She comes in, like, glittering from head to toe in, like, gemstones and diamonds and Mm -hmm. makeup and just like, wow, what's going on? And she's, like, talking in the third person and... Yeah. (laughs) It was, it was something. And there's not even solemn bum. You didn't even talk about the camp. Nope. Not important. Not at all. And then, like, we barely see uh, Naswada, too. Don't we see her, like, she for gets, a second? She's there she's... for a hot second. She's there. She's there yep. to tell Aragon. Oh, shirtless Aragon, mind you. Um, <laughs> 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 we got to get the gratuitous uh, skin in there, you know. Yes. Look how Ooh. ripped he is for a hot second. Yeah, she walks in and she's just like, hey, my dad wants to talk to you. And he's just like, and he just kind of stands there smiling like, oh, you like what you see? Uh-huh. And she's just yeah. like, okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then you see her later, like in her, um, like her battle armor. Mm-hmm. Um, also, I love the fact that they get ready for this battle. And like Aragon has this beautiful blue glittering <laughs> armor and Sapphira is just uh-huh. like head to toe and she's ready to destroy people. And, and even... Even Arya has this, like, amazing elven armor. And it's just like, yeah. no? <laughs> <laughs> like, y'all are supposed to be in, like, the most basic of basic leather. Like, this this fight was not this big glorious thing. It was like, oh, God, we're all gonna die. <laughs> yeah. No, it was epic. He knew all the magic, all the right words to say. Didn't just keep really shouting require any fine. energy. No, he was using Brissinger. the eyesight to see as oh, as and see the, as a dragon. I, oh my god, the eyesight! Every time he did that, I was like, "Yeah, that's not a spell." Yep, yeah, not I was a spell. like, "Excuse me, not a spell." No, that was the go-to. That was more in this movie than Brissinger was. That was yeah. a disappointment. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But oh, I love when Jersey totally... used Brissinger and it just like raised a spear off the ground. <laughs> like you have already talked about how Brissinger means fire. No, it means that. No, it's 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 psychic ability now. It's fine. I'll just lift stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brissinger. Yeah. Okay. It's all right. Oh, we totally skipped over the very beginning of the movie. I love how when Roran is kind of like, yeah, I'm going to go off on my own adventure. Like, this is clearly what I'm doing. Like, I'm just, I'm becoming a man. I'm doing my own thing. Oh. And his dad <laughs> being like, 
good for you son good for you get out there and make your make your bread you know like yeah yeah and then and he gives aragon right after this lovely speech like you'll find out what you're gonna do with your life one day and i was sitting there like um no roran is like hey i'm gonna be a blacksmith not you know run away from the army and and yeah. Gara was who like... Who was clearly totally in Carver Hall with all their trying to recruit everybody. Yeah, right? <laughs> and and, and Gara was just like, um, you're not going to be a blacksmith. You're going to like run this stupid farm. That's not yeah. fair. And then, so so Roran leaves. And then he's like, Aragon, you're going to run this stupid farm. I'm doing not, I'm not doing it anymore. <laughs> yeah. Um, but no, he's like, you'll, one day you'll grow up and be who you're supposed to be. You'll find what you're good at. Yeah. <laughs> and then he dies. <laughs> yeah. And then he dies. Because Brahm sets him on fire in this movie. (laughs) (laughs) A funeral fit for a king, man. Okay, leave him alone. (laughs) Yeah. I was like, okay. (laughs) But, oh. Like, rude, man. Like, do you even know he's dead yet? (laughs) Well, and like all this stuff with like the books and stuff, it was kind of like when when they were captured by the Varden and Arjihad was like, oh yeah, boy, I know who you are. You're the son of Morzan. Get out of here. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Dude, they screwed Mor- Mortag over so hard in this movie. Like, all they had him do for half of it was, like, creepily follow Aragon around in a black cloak. Yeah. Even though, like, all of a sudden, they're, like, they fly halfway across the continent and Murtaugh's just there again. Like, it's fine. Whatever, man. Yeah. And then, and mm-hmm. then he just shows up. Like, everybody just shows up at once. Like, we gotta go save Arya. Oh, my God. Brom died. Oh my god. Oh, Murtog's here. Oh my god. And then, like, everything happens. But Murtog is just just this bad boy in black leather the whole time who hardly even gets to talk. And then they get to, yeah. they get to the Varden and they're just like, boo you. <laughs> <laughs> and mm-hmm. Just like, or you could let Murtog explain that to Aragon beforehand yeah. like he's supposed to give him more personality in this and they show up and they're like yeah so aragon we trust you murtog we don't trust you and it's like that's also not how that happened (laughs) yeah aragon had to have his mind ravaged by magicians to make sure that uh they can trust him it's fine whatever man yeah oh my gosh no so i i'm gonna admit this because it's stupid but i don't care so i remember when i saw this movie there were only two things i really remember the movie sucked and i thought murtag was hot i thought he was hot and then i watched this again and i was like like no that 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 was wrong uh, oh, i was no. wrong yeah. i was wrong i mean yeah. you can go look at him now yeah like you know he grew I mean, up just... and he's not so bad looking now but also he doesn't look like yeah. like the actor in, <laughs> in aragon does not look like he looks right now like at all at no. all well also, and also like, i could not like is he wearing a wig in that or they just I like swear dye to God his hair was. like jet no, black it looked like yeah a terrible wig watching it now i was like oh uh, no 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 thank you also like but... give him some like vocal lessons maybe teach him an accent <laughs> he had such Isn't a he bro, the guy that's a country like, singer now he is the <laughs> he is <laughs> He had such a bro American accent. I'm like, you could. I mean, he only said ten words in the whole movie, but like, you could um, yeah, <laughs> maybe <laughs> coach him up on that. If everybody else is gonna yeah. speak with a British accent, maybe he should too. Yeah, being a bad boy doesn't mean you don't have an accent. That's not how that works. Oh, that's exactly how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and this movie, that's all that matters. Oh my god. But... Ugh. I mean, that actor, he's been in a variety of things since then. So I've seen him in a lot of things. But then realizing he was the one in this movie, I was like, oh. <laughs> Just, I mean, trying to connect Murtag to um, Sam and Tron Legacy. I just, oh, God. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, I've seen him in some, yeah. And then Tron, and then I've seen him in some, like, slow burn dramas before. Like, wow, it's just interesting. Mm. Mm-mm. But, okay, so I don't know if maybe we should share this. So I was looking at, because I wanted to know, because Christopher Paolini was still, like, really young. Like, he was definitely, like, under 20 when this movie came out. So, because he was younger and stuff, like, it was more of a question, like, how much power did he really have? There's no way they really let him, like, make his opinion on this movie. Like, there were already two books written. Like, what went wrong in the process of this? So, in October 2017, he did an AMA on Reddit, and somebody asked him, how did you feel about the movie adaptation for Aragon? 
Do tell. And he said, <laughs> yes. <laughs> he like laughed. Spill the tea. Well, I'm glad it was made since so few books ever get made into movies and it introduced millions of new readers to the inheritance cycle. That said, the movie reflects the studio and the director's view of the story, whereas the books reflect mine and everyone is free to enjoy them on their own merits. The very simple tactical. What a, what a nice guy. Yes. <laughs> what a nice guy. Yeah. And then uh, somebody else asked, was there no way to retain some control over the direction of the Aragon movie, or was that simply not on the table? That time around, no. It was their money, so they were the ones in charge. If another adaptation ever gets off the ground, though, you can rest assured I'll retain as much control as possible. Which should be happening. Boom! Because... Yes! He is heavily involved in the development of a series that's going to be on Disney Plus at some point. Oh my god. And and I just... Ugh. Thank God they have another chance to do right by this series. Yes, which TV and show it's, and perfect. it's good that it's Disney too, because they're going to have to fork over some money mm-hmm. because of Fira. Yeah. You got to get her in there and you got to get her looking good. So, oof. Yeah. Well, Disney is all about like revamping some of those big book series from the time because they're also pretty far into, I think, the first season of um, Percy Jackson because they're remaking that from those movies into a TV show uh-huh. as well. But then, yeah, Aragon, which I think is still going to be a long way off from development at this point. I mean, right now we have Probably. the writer's strike going on, which will be going on for a while. So, which is rightfully so for the writers to, you know, have their say, have their do. But hopefully we'll get an appropriate Aragon series at some point in the future then. I look forward, I mean, I look forward to like seeing anything done with this series. Like, I want to know the casting, like... Mm. Uh, I feel after the movie, I feel like they can't really get it wrong. <laughs> no. <laughs> everything will be fine. I'm really not worried about, like, because we've had the worst case situation. Like, everything will be fine. I look forward to it. Although, I really hope it's successful because there are parts, there are, like, there are moments in the third and the fourth book that I, I want to see on a screen. Mm. There are concepts and things that happen in this, sh- this series that that deserve to have viewers for it you know agreed oh there are just so many things that i i want to i want people to be able to experience yeah i hope we get that because this movie was not it also this movie didn't really end like they were going to continue the series like it was barely a cliffhanger it was kind of like a one and done situation in this movie yeah for real i was like oh aria is leaving okay i guess we don't need her for the second book right now yeah everything's good yeah <laughs> Like things are, I mean, things are going to happen, like kick off real fast in that second book, but okay, mm-hmm. it's fine. Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, <laughs> we don't need half of these characters for what's going to happen, I suppose. No, nope, we killed off half of them we need, you know, it's going to be a really small contained story. Oh, and, and Roran, Roran, they said <laughs> goodbye to Roran in the first five minutes <laughs> yeah. and he never showed up again. Nope. <laughs> they just sent him on his merry way and said, don't worry about everything bad about to happen. You're yeah. not part of it. Yep. Go run away from the army or whatever. Yeah. Nobody cares. <laughs> Uh. oh one other tidbit so there's two things music related i don't know if you noticed so did you see who did the music for this i didn't okay it was patrick doyle who i only know who did didn't he do the music for the fourth harry potter movie uh maybe yeah i thought it was yeah he did goblet of fire yes i he's probably done a lot of other things but as soon as i was like huh i know who that is and that is interesting and I mean, the music was kind of loud throughout it, so I did notice the music, but it was just sure. He also did Thor. Oh, okay. The original Thor. Hmm. So, I mean, he's a really good composer. I yeah. don't really remember, like, the soundtrack to Aragon, like, standing out. Mm-hmm. Probably because I was talking over <laughs> and being petty as heck the whole time. It's That's my fault. <laughs> sorry, sorry, Patrick Doyle. I'm sure you did fine on it, but um, I, <laughs> I got nothing for that one. Yeah. <laughs> What about the credit scene? This was like teen flashbacks. I didn't recognize oh my God, immediately. There's a credit scene. Or then the credit scene, the credit uh song. Oh, I had already turned it off. I don't oh, know. oh my gosh! <laughs> so I didn't make it far enough. <laughs> I watched it with Amy, and Amy's like, "OMG!" I immediately know this song, and I was like, "I've heard this song before. I just can't place it from my teenage no, no. years." Okay. Avril Lavigne. Brandon said the same thing. <laughs> Brandon did the same thing. He was like, isn't there like a really good song in the movie? And I was like, "Ah, uh, <laughs> there's music in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yep. No, you turned it off too early. Yes. The credits song. Apparently, I, 
I regret nothing. Is a hit from Avril Lavigne, Keep Holding On, which was originally released on the Aragon soundtrack. So she... Listeners can't see my face, but... um. <laughs> I'm making a face right now. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But yeah, so at least you can listen to the song. Don't watch the movie. You know, recommendation there. That's... mm... (laughs) Are you okay, (laughs) Wade? No, (laughs) I'm not. (laughs) Yep. Also, the song is just confusing. It doesn't really fit. (sighs) We were discussing that when the credits were... That's why I'm hurting (laughs) inside because I'm like singing it in my head. Yeah. And I'm like, what? Why? <laughs> Why because. <laughs> Who needed a paycheck that bad? We needed oh. some angsty music with our angsty Murtaugh in here. <laughs> For our one second of it. No. <laughs> I hope Avril Lavigne got something good out of this. She's too talented for that nonsense. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, that probably oh was the moneymaker for the movie. Let's be real. <laughs> uh. That's all I got. I wanted to end on that one because that was just great. So <laughs> I think that's an appropriate place to end. So okay. We're good. Well, yeah, I think we're done talking about this movie. Um, listeners, let us know what you think of this movie. Let us know if we are not crazy because, I mean, this movie was negatively received. But let us know if you do like it. And if you do, why? We'd love to have a chat with you. As always, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at PodDemastered. You can also feel free to send us an email as well at demasteredpodcast at gmail.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel where we post our episodes as well as some video content every once in a while. So I think that's enough talk on Aragon. Hope you tune into our next episode. See ya.